Hello and welcome to my first video tutorial. My name is Grisha Tyson and today we are using Cinema 4D 11.5 to create something like this. You can see a uh, particle system and the dynamic system. And the particle system emits some some cubes and the dynamic system let them fall down, interact with each other and interact with the floor. I am only using the um, trial version of Cinema for the 11.5 so um, I had to screen, screen capture the picture viewer because you are not allowed to export movies from the trial version. Um, I got the inspiration for that uh, from a German guy called Matthias Müller. He did uh, some uh, particle tests and uploaded them to Vimeo. Um, he uses 3D Studio Max and a plugin called uh, Particle Flow. Mm, I think it's a plugin. Let's see what he he created. You can see he uses um, a particle system which interacts with the music and his particles are quite advanced so there are the smoke strike strokes smoke strokes sorry um, and um, I think done with an auxiliary system um, but you are not able to do that with the standard uh, emitter from, from Cinema 4D. Um, but we try a similar or a simple version of that. So let's open Cinema 4D and let's start with this project. Um, first of all we need an emitter uh, to emit our little cubes. So we y y you can press here to uh, get an emitter or you go under objects, particles and press the emitter there. So if we scrub through the timeline you can see the emitter starts emitting particles but now these are only small lines and if you render them out mm, you see nothing. So um, we have to do a custom particle for that and uh, we are using this cube. We are tweaking that and making it a bit smaller like 23 we give it a fillet with a radius of 0 0.0 uh, sorry 0.7 and the subdivisions are 2 and if we make the cube a child of the emitter and in the emitter settings turn on the show object option we see these cubes as particles. If we render them now you see the emitter starts to emit these cubes. Yeah. So now that's the first thing. We push that up a bit. Sorry. So now we start with our dynamic setup. Um, first of all I create a floor so that the cubes can fall down on the floor and then interact with each other at the floor. Um, but the dynamic system, the MoGraph 2 dynamic system only works with dynamic, uh, with a MoGraph object. So we have to use a MoGraph object but our cube at the moment is not a MoGraph object so I'll put it out of the emitter and I create a cloner object make the cube a cloner object um, make the cube a child of the cloner object sorry and turn down the cl clones here to one so there's only one clone and make the cloner object a child of the emitter so now 
it's like before. If we render that, we have this floor now. It's it's gray because of the floor, um, but it's it's like before. But now we have our clone object. So now we can set up our dynamics. If we right click on the clone object, and under MoGraph tag we choose the rigging body tag. You can see now we he have the rigging body tag, and I um, use Control, Control click to copy that to the floor. And you can see the tag is a different one here on the clone object. It's with a white ball, and here I don't know a blue ball, something like that. So now we see the cubes falling down and they are falling on the floor great and looks really cool just for two tags really nice so that's the basic of the of the dynamic setup but um, the cubes are sliding too much I think um, it's like they were on ice or something like that so Mm, if we go in uh, in the rigging body object attack, sorry, and change the friction and push it to two, something like that, higher, the cubes are falling down and because of the friction are not sliding anymore or or less. So we can put that maybe to one. That looks. That looks nice, or maybe 1.2. Yeah, right. So now we can tweak the emitter th a bit and pump up the birth rate. Um, let's do some changes uh, on the emitter. Th so we we. Uh, turn up the speed like 350 meters and you can see it shoots out a bit more and we give that a rotation of I don't know 50 so now if we turn them down you can see they're flying out and rotate while flying out first they were only flying out straight and then rotating because of the dynamic system, because of gravity. Um, great. So let's put that back to 50. Um, and that's the whole thing of that. But you can do a bit more. You can, if you want something in the way of the cubes, like if you want a, f a cylinder for example and we want that somewhere around here we can do that and do not ex exactly the same thing but a similar thing um now we we have to create another uh, MoGraph object and so we go on the mode graph and this time we are using the plane effector so make the cylinder a child of the plane effector switch off the position transform of the plane e effector and uh, put a MoGraph rigging body tag on that cylinder so now let's see what happens yeah Right. The cubes are falling towards the cylinder and the cylinder acts as an obstacle and they yeah they they are bouncing off that cylinder. Great. You you can do it with I don't know anything or a lot of stuff. If you render that out. It looks not that nice at the moment but we will get there. Great. Cool. So, we can even turn, rotate the emitter a bit and 
turn that up. Great. And if you want another object, not the cubes uh, coming out of the emitter, but we want a sphere. You just create a sphere. Oh, first we scale it down like that and make it the child of the clone object. And so, oh, maybe scale it down a bit more. And play back, and you see it doesn't. Oh, it's it's not a child of the sphere. It's only a child of the emitters. Uh, it's, sorry, it's not a child of the clone object. It's only the child of the emitter. So, make it a child of the clone object, and it works like that. Um, I think you have to pump up the friction for that. Sorry. If you do like, oh, s floor, and do like free, maybe. They are rolling too, too much, or maybe we try friction here to three. It's a bit better, but. Because they are th spheres, they, I think they will roll on and on, and you can nothing do about that. Maybe ten. A bit better, I think. Maybe ten. Yeah, it's, it's hard to stop them, but. You get the idea. So let's put that back to 3 and this one to point zero, and uh, put the cube back in there. Back in there. So, great. Um, now what I did for for the preview thing is just some material with a color, I don't know. Use a color here, something like that. Make a reflection, and as a texture, you choose a Fresnel. So it's not that hard, you can see it. And it's more reflective on the outside than in the inside, so it's more natural. Um, and just put that on the clone object and you have a nice material for that. You m We make a grayish material for that, just really quick. I learned this technique from uh, from Nick from Grayscale Gorilla, really cool tutorials for Cinema 4D and for um, After Effects. Check them out, they are really, really cool. Um, and now, make a global illumination and the ambient occlusion. Pump up the global illumination here. And it takes a while to render, but. Oh, 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 oh sorry. That's not good because you need a light source. So if you render that out, that should look a bit nicer. So it, it took about one and a half minutes to render this scene. Um, it looks quite nice, I think. Um, it was easy to set up. The whole dynamic system is just a MoGraph object a floor object and uh, two tags and a bit of tweaking but you can make really cool stuff with that um, so check that out and um, play with that um, so that's it 
um, I'm not really satisfied with the with the uh, emitter here with the standard particle system of Cinema 4D. You can use particle thinking particles uh, for that, but it's quite advanced, and you have to get along with it and study the whole thing. Um, I don't like it too much, um, but I think if you work a lot with it, it's worth it. Um, check that out, uh, but Maxon can do a bit more with with the standard emitter um, and particle system here in Cinema 4D. That would be nice if there are some more um, options for that. So maybe in version 12 or something like that. So thank you for listening. Um, if you have uh, any comment or any suggestion for me, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think about the tutorial. This is my first one. Comment on the blog or send me an email with feedback. Um, I would love to hear what you are thinking. Uh, this is Grisha Tyson. Thanks for watching and uh, have fun with Cinema 4D.